guys, this is Amy Linden. I started this podcast for you because I am here to help empower you because you are enough. I am here to help you get to the next level in your career. And most of the times, it has everything to do with what you think about yourself. I am a booking coach, celebrity booking coach, 54 plus network series regulars, an Emmy winner, an Imogen winner, and thousands of people working around the globe, all because of this technique that I created. I really wanna help you. So I do believe that if you keep listening, You might pick up some gem that I am dropping down and it will change the course of your entire career. It doesn't matter whether or not you have a shitload of credits. And I really need to put that that thing to rest right now. It's all positioning in terms of your package, your marketing and your package. And it's also being prepared, obviously, when you have the opportunity and to beat your competition. People have started somewhere. And there are, like, I had a guy that he had only theater credits and he had his package so put together and he was so on point on his booking skills that he booked Stumptown three episode arc. This is like he shot it in November and December. Guest star, top of the show, guest star, three episodes, guest star, front billing. So, this bullshit about, oh, you need to start at the bottom and work your way up, that's not true. But the truth of the matter is you have to have your shit together. And part of having your shit together is finding me today and I'm very happy you found me. And um, I, you know, I know it sounds like, oh, Amy, she's so conceited. I'm just confident. I'm confident that this shit works. I'm confident in the people that, that I work with. I'm confident that if you do the work properly, that you will beat everybody. And I know it sounds like brutal beat everybody, but come on. I'm not gonna give a series regular, which is millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars to somebody that they're not gonna have confidence in. And why would they do that? So that's why I talk a lot about power and owning your power and knowing what you're doing and walking in with such extreme, extreme confidence because you have, to, you have to help the decision makers by putting them at ease. And you also understand that on set, and especially in commercials, the actor is always the last person considered until you're a major star. The break is so, so it's, it's such a big break. It's like the bottom part is like, who are you? Um, yeah, go over there and you know, and your name is taped to the thing. And you know what I mean? You're like, whatever, until you become a star. And they're like, oh, can I get you some bones? Um, I mean, I, they'll give you sushi before 11 a.m. I mean, it, it's ridiculous the difference between this and this. And I've seen both of it because I have clients that have done both. Um, that's why I'm like, well, why, why is this TV so completely different than what I auditioned for? It's because they have confidence in you that if they throw you a line, you'll be able to handle it. They have confidence that if they change the complete character, you're going to be able to handle it. That's why I'm like, well, how does anybody really work in television if, if I prepared so greatly for this really big role and I get there and all of a sudden it's changed? Like I, I started out once, um, I was supposed to be a biker and just really racy looking. So I showed up with tattoos and do some, some purple in my hair. And, and I had, I think I put a, a thing, a nose ring. And then when I got to set to wardrobe, they're like, oh no, uh, he, you and your husband now own a, a wedding service and it's in a tiki hut. I'm like, what? Like, how did that happen? You know? So now I'm wearing a Hawaiian shirt. They took this out, you know, I didn't have it, it was fake anyway, and they said I I could keep one of the tattoos, because those were fake too. But anyway, the point point that I'm trying to make to you is, is that you have to be in the box to work outside the box. And what does that mean exactly? Be in the box of truth, be in the box of what it is that that is their show. I had this one girl that went in, in on Angel like 12 times, and I'm like, Jesus Christ, you know, if, if that were me and I got in my car 12 times to see that casting director, 
I think I would have been obsessed and watched every single episode. I think I would have been on IMDb Pro and seen how the how the clothing designers were putting their people in. I think I would have looked for a role that is similar to the roles that I go for and how they usually cast it. You see how specific that is, guys? How much detailed work are you actually doing? And it's within the details that's going to put you way, way, way but above. And it's going to get some of you out of co-star, guest star, into booking a series regular. And it's going to push most of you into booking a co-star. And then uh, making that happen for yourself. But the biggest thing is, is understanding that in order to be on television, you have to look like you're on television. So those of us who came from drama Rama school, and I'm one of them, I couldn't book shit when I got out here. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> I was like, what the hell? Okay, you guys raise your hand and go, what the hell? Everybody go, what the hell? Um, I have all this training. Why isn't this happening? Why isn't this happening? I mean, I don't know if any of you did any research on me, but I mean, I freaking trained everywhere. I trained with Stella Adler. She was like right there. I studied at Sanford Meisner School. He was upstairs. I was too young. I was in the basement with the ginger school. But I was there. You know, I studied with Ray Liotta's coaches. Um, who cares? The London Academy of Performing Arts, Shakespeare. Who cares? Nobody really cares. If you can't book spit, if you suck in the room, how are they looking at my resume and going, why did she suck? She went to that London Academy. <laughs> They're not going to do that. Either you're gonna show up as this person and it's gonna happen or it's not gonna happen. And most of the time it has to do with whether or not you have the power to take it. What is that power? Uh, you know, that's why that's why my people do so well in booking co-stars for the first time or hitting the sad card for the first time, everything for the first time. Why? Because it's power, all about power. Okay, let's talk about dodgeball for a second. <laughs> who, were, who was picked first? The strong ones and the artists, what were the artists doing? They're like, eh, don't pick me, you're gonna hit my face. I, I just wanna go draw a painting or you know, go be with my theater people. You know, I mean, we were like, every, a couple of us were like picked. I was the one that was picked because I was, I was just obnoxiously um, competitive. Um, but most artists aren't. That's why we became actors, is so people will notice us and love us. So if you don't know the art of competition and power of being a leader, why would they give you a series regular? Because that's what that is. Now the series leads, like Mark Carmen, I mean, all those guys move up to become a series lead. They're the captain of the ship. And so where are you in the packing order? Are, are you in a place in, in in your work where you can, you can deliver with strength and confidence. I'd rather you be strong and wrong than weak and hesitant. People do not want weak people. I mean, think about any person that you would ever want to go on a date with or marry or, or be with or hang out with. Do you want them to be like a pussy? No. You want them to stand up and go, damn it, I fucking want you. Right? We don't want weak people. So why are we acting weak when we approach our acting career? Why are we acting weak when we approach our auditions? The moment that you get an audition is the moment that you guys have to be like, okay, I'm jumping in and I'm gonna fucking kill this. I'm gonna kill it. I'm gonna kill it because I'm gonna break it down and I'm gonna tell the best story out there. That's who's getting the job. Guys, you're storytellers. That's what you are, you're storytellers. And who's ever gonna tell the best story is gonna get the job. And what does a story entail? Well, there's a beginning, middle, and end. And there's emotions. There's emotions in a story. Hey guys, thank you so much for listening. I so appreciate it. So if you really believe you're enough, then you will click that button and you will go to the store and get involved. 
I can lead a horse to water, but I can't make them drink. I have uh, promo codes available if you DM me and follow me on Instagram. Take care, and I will see you soon. Share with a friend.